Okay, you guys, we have about 15 minutes left, and we're going to do a little Let's Play and chat, and you guys can uh, uh, tell me all the games that I shouldn't forget about as we go into the Rocket and Ray Guns. Um, and uh, you're going to come up. I forgot your name is Corey. Corey's going to come up, and uh, we're going to play a little um, Star Wars Pinball, which uh, Zen uh, Studios just sent out to us on the Nintendo Switch. There you go. You. See you, brother. Likewise. Nice Congrats. to see you. Thank you for coming and joining us. Okay, um, th might as well just resume here. Uh, have you ever played any of these Zen pinball games before? I have not. Well, they're like traditional pinball experiences, but um, they have lots of animated bits. Like you see Chewbacca's fixing the, uh, actually you can't really look at all the animated. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot going on Yeah, here. there is so much and you, you, you want to look everywhere, but you really just got to focus on uh, hitting the bumpers and hitting the targets and getting the scores. But th there's a whole cantina in the background. Han is sitting in his uh, his pilot's chair right there. This is just like one of like 20 Star Wars tables. And I wanted to play this for a couple reasons. I've loved these Zen pinball games. Um, and they've done a very good job over the years. You can link this to the Zen account and you can challenge your friends to all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, competitions for high scores and stuff. This is really like classic old, you know, pinball goodness. Um, but they uh, also have thrown in a ton of different types of tables across the whole Star Wars spectrum. All of the classic movies and the prequels and the more recent ones as well as some of the animated stuff. So it's a pretty good deal if you like pinball and if you like Star Wars. And of course, it's all about Star Wars right now with Rise of, the, uh, Rise of Skywalker next week. Uh, okay. Uh, watching Victor Lucas's Zen from Blade Blur. That's cool. That's nice. Use the Force Luke. Or use the Force Vic. Uh, says Chris Dugan. Um, uh, let's see. I see. I can see a Connect Three working in tandem with a VR solution uh, from Microsoft. Sam I M one one one. It's interesting how Xbox is um, really kind of pushing this PC aesthetic with the Series X, but they're uh, they're not. They're holding off on AR or VR with their console, with their platform. You know, they're doing stuff. Uh, I think more on the B two B kind of space maybe thinking about uh, real estate and things like that but uh, in terms of games they've just sort of dabbled they've just sort of shown off a couple of things maybe they're thinking of uh, uh, like Microsoft event spaces or something like that with VR and AR we'll find out um, let's see what we got here from software make armored core great again from spawn caliber yeah you guys like the uh, the armored core games there's some good ones in that series for sure Steel Battalion. I we started talking about mechs and all of these classic mech games start coming up. Sam, I am talking about Steel Battalion. Uh, you know, I see why you're talking about a VR mech experience using uh, sort of connect technology, so that you could have all of these different uh, uh, things to touch, but not have to create a whole. Remember when Capcom made that huge controller with all the buttons and widgets and stuff? I have one of those somewhere. It's crazy. Uh, oh, Mark Ferrer is asking about that right now. Uh, another Mercenaries Playground of discussion, uh, Destruction Chris Dugan is talking about as I was uh, talking about uh, Mech Warrior 5 there. I haven't heard anything about Mech Warrior, Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries yet. I should check it out. Uh, I, it's getting some pretty decent scores. I haven't played enough that I can kind of evaluate it, uh, but I've enjoyed what I've checked out so far. It's cool. Um, Blade Blur has uploaded everything for the video, so you're going to be seeing some Blade Blur in the uh, uh, Rocket and Ray Guns next week, which is great. Jeff Meacham, I can't believe the new Batman game didn't get announced at the Game Awards. Yeah, Jeff, I, I don't know what's going on with that. It, you know, we all know something's coming. When is it coming? I think it's probably a PlayStation 5 announcement, right? That's probably what Fair they've bad. done, right? It's such a huge... Uh, a hugely anticipated title. And DC, I think, they they have to hit back a little because the Marvel uh, with Avengers and the success of Spider-Man, uh, I, th I think DC's thinking, okay, what's the most strategic way that we can get the most buzz on a new Batman game? That'd be great. Um, comment from Nintendo Boy 17 Sadly, I feel a game like Mercenaries would piss people off, especially when they would be taking notes from Far Cry or Wolfenstein, given uh, recent events in uh, real life. Uh, that's an interesting comment, for sure. I think um, today's sensitivities certainly 
apply to whatever, you know, expensive games get made. But that's always been the case. There's always been a, a shift in, uh, um, you know, what's, what's okay for the marketplace and what, what are people going to uh, embrace, you know. And sometimes uh, uh, some, some big risks end up hurting studios. Uh, and sometimes it ends up becoming a benefit, like all the violence issues surrounding Mortal Kombat. You know, that helped sell so many copies of that game back in the day. Um, yeah, but interesting comment for sure, Nintendo Boy 17. Question from JBJ Blaze. Uh, it was said the new Xbox would be named after its purpose. What do you think of its official name as announced in the Jeff Keighley's Game Awards? I say it should be Xbox Desktop X. Um, yeah, they almost could have called it the Xbox Windows machine or yeah, something. Right. It, it, it looks very modular, and it looks like, uh, I, I don't know. It's uh, We don't really know a whole bunch yet, do we? No, we just got the name, really. Yeah. Just the, the, the look of it. It look, looks like look, a PC, really but is it a PC? Is it, no is, it the new, like, is it the new Steam box? Is that the kind of concept there? Um, yeah, there's so much that we still don't know. They just put the name and the machine out there. Um, and it's called series. Does that mean that there will be more? Is there a series Y? Is there a series Z or Z? I don't know. Of Wolverine Origins, okay. Are the Zen Pinball games on the Switch? I don't know if all the Zen Pinball games are on the Switch, Dave McKee, but this is uh, Zen's Star Wars pinball game. Let's show them a different, uh, different table here. Pop pop into here and we'll go to uh, exit I don't think so yet it would have it would have spoilers in it anyways uh, so what do we have we have uh, the a Han Solo table from the solo movie um, the battle the battle of Mimbon I don't know what that is what's the battle of Mimbon Wow Kurt's, sure Kurt's wearing a Star Wars shirt and he doesn't yeah, know what this is there's there's uh, Last Jedi. What's this one? Rogue One. They've got Clone Wars. I don't know if new ones are coming in. There's a Boba Fett. You want to play? It looks a... like there's space for two more. I would imagine there's gonna. Sure. Looks yeah. like they might have uh, you know Boba maybe two more coming in after the release of Rise of Skywalker. Let's be check out the, the realm of possibilities. That would be cool. Let's check out Boba Fett and see what, see what that one looks like. Is there a Wolf 357 now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see. Yeah, I don't know if there's a Star Trek pinball. Crossing the there's an opportunity for you. Have you ever played the Skyrim pinball? Adrian Leon is asking. No, I haven't. I, uh, I, I used to. I, I was obsessive about these Zen pinball games on the Xbox 360. That, you know, tied in nicely with uh, Xbox Live Arcade and the leaderboards and Xbox Live. Uh, and so I got into tons of them. Um, and then I ended up playing them on the iPad. The iPad, I think, is still my favorite because you can sort of turn it all vertically and, and the uh, aspect ratio just works out perfectly and the tactility of touching the, uh, the sides of the iPad just work out great. Uh, and that's kind of where I played for a long time and then you, you know what happens. You, you just, you have your fill. But when I heard that this was coming to the Switch, I asked for a code because I wanted to check it out and it's also uh, perfect timing with the new movie coming out. Uh, thoughts on uh, Beat Saber winning best VR game when it was nominated and lost last year? Uh, yes, it was weird. And then Green Day was a performer at the uh, at the awards, and there's a Green Day Beat Saber thing. Um, yeah, it's it's an amazing game. It it is weird that we have games, even like Fortnite, and there was an award for best ongoing game. It feels like every game is ongoing now, you know, like with a, a port to a new system a year later or whatever. It feels like everything kind of blurs from one year to the next because the scale of these enterprises are, is so massive and Beat Saber is still as worthy to pick up immediately if you have a VR device today as it was last year. Um, it is weird to kind of, you know, place that calendar year restraint on a lot of these titles because they cross over like crazy. Uh, but yeah, it's weird. For sure it's weird. Um, Question, were you disappointed with uh, Jeff Keighley's lack of plaid I, uh, from JBJ Blaze? I thought Jeff looked great last night. His suit, he had like a cool tuxedo on. He looked very styling, very stylish. I thought he looked great. Uh, question, best gaming year in the past decade? Oh, Blade Blur. I don't know, I've been thinking about the games as individual entities for the best of the decade, but I haven't been thinking about the best year for gaming. 
in the last decade. I mean, 2017 was pretty rad with the launch of the Switch, you know. Yeah, that was a great one. Was, the past one's been great, too, with God of War, Spider-Man, all those great 2018 titles. was pretty excellent as well. Sorry. Yeah. And 2019, I think, has been a consistent year of nines. There's been a lot of nines this year, but less, like, blow you away, 10 out of 10, oh, my God, never seen that before kind of experiences. Uh, that is an awesome question. I think that's one I have to I have to assess assess I have to kind of think about. Would love your thoughts on that though. If you've got uh, you know comments when you watch the archive of this video, or uh, uh, if you've got thoughts in the chat right now, spill them. Let's hear it. Comment the Hellblade 2 trailer blew my mind. So freaky and amazing. Yep, beautiful. A lot of pre-rendered stuff though for the trailers. A lot of like uh, you know like Blur Digital was very busy concocting all kinds of. Uh, um, sort of uh, visual targets as they're, you know, they create these cool 90 second or two minute long video sequences that are uh, amazing uh, reference material for what the actual game artists are working on right now. Uh, but presumably the tech of PlayStation 5 and Xbox One X or Series X will get us closer to these visual targets than we've ever been before. Um, I heard in the early stages of Amico's development the system malfu uh, malfunctioned in Tommy's pants, which left him with an erectile dysfunction. This is a taco sm smuggler. Um, always with the interesting comments, taco smuggler. Uh, if the Game Awards were actually sanctioned, that they might mean something. Ah, Super Bob throwing down the, uh, the, the criticisms about the award. You know what? Keely is listening to all these comments and reading all these comments, so... Uh, if you have thoughts or suggestions or opinions about the awards, I say tweet at Jeff Keeley and let him know exactly what you think of everything. Um, he's going to take it all in for sure. Uh, do you think if they bought tables from old Zen Pinball games, they should carry over to other newer game versions? I bought lots of Zen Pinball 2 tables, but I switched to PS4 from Xbox 360 and had none. Forest Tekken videos. This is a... Um, you know, we're gonna move away from physical, like that's happening, right? And this is this cuts to the heart of what the video game industry really needs to reconcile with uh, as we move into this all digital future, um, which is inevitable. Um, I think a lot of those concerns about losing stuff when you transfer from generation to generation will become moot when we're all paying 10 bucks a month and we have access to an endless library of titles because uh, it will just carry over with whatever hardware is serving us that information. Uh, but before we get to that, yes, I do think that companies need to have digital uh, purchase solutions that let you migrate software from platform to platform. And I think that might be something that starts to get introduced over the next couple of years. I wish Nintendo had done that with... Uh, uh, access to a lot of its eShop stuff and a lot of its virtual console stuff uh, from the Wii to the Wii U. I think there was a little bit of that, but I, I feel like that should have been the case with the Switch. They um, uh, have kind of sidestepped that a little bit by the uh, allowing people to play. If you sign up for the uh, Nintendo online accounts, you can play the NES software and the Super Nintendo software is part of that. Um, but, you know, I'm sure there are lots of you, like I did, that bought tons of games for the Wii and my 3DS and my uh, Wii U, which exist on those platforms, but I have no access to them on the Switch, and I really wish that I did. And I feel like going forward, um, and, you know, I think uh, Xbox is doing a pretty damn good job at that, uh, where they let you access your archive from even the Xbox days, the original Xbox days, and uh, play them on new machines, which I think is great. Um, Vic, do you remember the RTS Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds? If so, do you remember what you and Tommy thought of it? Uh, I do remember the RTS, uh, Nintendo Boy 17. Um, I get it confused because there were a few RTS games that is set in the Star Wars universe. I can't remember which one I liked the most, but uh, um, there was one really good one. I can't remember what the title of that is. Uh, but So I can't remember those scores for sure. Um... Dave McKee, I am happy that VC does not exist on Switch. If it did, people would do nothing but buy old games and we would have diminished new games and ports. I don't know, Dave. I think that um, I think it's important to be able to access um, uh, 
you know, formational software, stuff that, that kind of set the tone for uh, future generations of game makers to borrow from to create new ideas. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, I work with the school quite often and it's always surprising to me that people have never heard of Eugene Jarvis or Robotron or Smash TV and they are making a, a twin stick shooter. And I think access to that lot, that archive, those older games, is um, is incredibly important. And the absence of access to that software leads people to pirate that software. And I would much rather that the companies have a plan in place that lets people own access to this content across whatever generation of hardware they're going to be playing this stuff on uh, so that it doesn't get lost and doesn't become this uh, this thing that just exists on Russian servers or something, you know what I mean? Um, and it's, it, it's, it's good to recognize that innovation and awesome game concepts can exist in the absence of, you know, brand new and super fast technology. That's encouraging and that's in, in, inspiring to people that want to go off and be independent developers. I just reviewed the uh, the Tourist on the Nintendo Switch and it's a pretty sleek looking piece of code. For sure it's made by Shinin, uh, but it's also got a lot of simple ideas that are, that are uh, you know, tuned and work really, really well. Plus, built within the game, and this is something I always love, you can walk into an arcade in the world and play little arcade games on those little arcade machines. And I love that kind of stuff. And they, they all sort of tip their hat to classic arcade experiences. Star Wars Pinball, uh, I see your point, Vic, but not at this time, uh, near the end of the console, not at the start. I, I, don't, I don't think that the purchase of classic stuff eclipses the desire for the new. I just think that it's important for the classic stuff to be available. Like it, it really drives me crazy, uh, and this will, I'll take one more question after this, it really drives me crazy that Midway was purchased by Warner Brothers and then all of Midway's classic games like Joust and Robotron and Defender and Stargate and tons of other ones, Spy Hunter, they've all just, they've been sitting there completely dormant. And now there are ton, lots of new machines that unless you dig into uh, you can't even get those games on Switch, but unless you dig into the the stores, I, I think on Xbox you can get that stuff. On Steam you can get some of that stuff, but you gotta know it and you gotta search for it. There's no way to have that ever available to you. Um, it's just a crying shame because you know Midway, um, uh, you know th through the 80s and 90s was one of the most innovative game makers on earth, and we that stuff should that always be available to right people. Um, it's like having a Spotify account and, and uh, like the Prince library is not available to you, you know? Like there's some seminal work that is, is current no matter when you access it. Uh, all right. Uh, Sorry, I have no idea what I just did. That's okay. Nuke China has one last comment that we're gonna give right here. If I ran the Game Awards, I wouldn't let anything be shown that wasn't real gameplay. That is a uh, that is a good comment, and uh, you should if you've got comments for Jeff, I know he welcomes them. So just tweet at him. He's reading through all of that stuff. You know, like we work really hard creating regular content on a on a kind of weekly basis or as close to daily basis as we can we can do. Jeff works all year to make those awards, and he cares deeply about them, and he can, and he wants to have people be very, very happy with them. So if you've got thoughts for him, I know he would love to read them. Um, okay, uh, that is going to do it for us today and uh, for this year for EP Live. Thank you all so much for your support and for watching and uh, for subscribing and for sharing and for liking our vids and for commenting and for coming up and and let's playing with me. Um, we have got the Rocket and Raygun starting next week, so please come back and check all of those out. Let us know what you think of them and, and uh, all the games that we should have awarded uh, the Rocket and Rayguns to. Um, we're going to take a holiday break. Uh, we'll be back in the new year with some new content for you in January, and then EP Live is going to return on a regular schedule in February next week. Uh, but uh, don't don't fear. There's going to be a lot of content on EPN uh, coming up very quickly for you, and uh, definitely want you guys to watch all of the Rocket and Reagan Awards. Let's all keep our fingers crossed that the new Star Wars movie kicks ass. Yes? Mm -hmm. 
We all hope so. Blake has got the thumbs down and the unhappy face, <laughs> as we expect. But uh, hopefully Rise of, of Skywalker is awesome. One. At least we have the Mandalorian, right? Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you, uh, well, next week, but we'll see you again in 2020. Have an awesome holiday season. And make sure that you spend time with your family and all your loved ones, but also you play forever.